cool thing about buying a car like this is, oh, you look like a responsible adult, but actually, you've got a car that can uh, pretty much kick butt anywhere it goes. It handles really nicely. Welcome to an episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the vehicle we're featuring today, my 2012 Cadillac CTSV with a six-speed manual. That's why I bought it. For the first time since 1948, Cadillac featured a manual transmission. This is basically, for all intents and purposes, a four-seater Corvette. You know, it's a great car. It was, made, it was meant to battle the BMW M5s and all those type of cars. Yeah, I know, I can see you giggling, but it's, it's more than up to the competition. V8, uh, supercharged, 556 horsepower with a six-speed manual box. You know, it's amazing to me that Cadillac had the guts to go ahead and do this because Mercedes-Benz, uh, Ferrari, all these, even Lamborghini pretty much abandoned the manual transmission, but Cadillac was determined to change their image. And uh, they really did it. I mean, when I was a kid, Cadillac was kind of a old man's car, land yacht, all that kind of stuff. You know, all that talk, the big fins and whatever it might be. And then they made themselves lean and fast and uh, a good handling sports sedan. And this thing is a lot of fun to drive. If I had any complaint, I always felt the wheels were a little too small. Maybe. I'll, when these tires eventually, God, the tires are 10 years old now, uh, eventually do wear out, I'll put some Michelin Cup 2s or something on it. But that's really all it needs. It's a wonderful handling car, and you can beat four people in a, in a pinch, and they, they would be pinched because it's a little tight back there. A lot of people like the wagon. I do like the wagon. A lot of folks like the four-door. I've always been a two-door guy. I, I, I just like it. Uh, I think it's a good-looking car, nice size, nice shape. And you're saving probably fifteen to twenty thousand dollars over the European equivalent. You know, uh, it's hard to change an image, but Cadillac's been able to do it. They've raced at Le Mans, and uh, there's a whole series for these things that makes it a lot of fun. Uh, let, let's take a look at that engine. Let's open the hood up here. I like the bong 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 in the door. That's what I love about General Motors. If you get a Cadillac, it goes bong, bong, bong. You get a, a cheap Chevy. It's, a, it's just a horrible noise. The most grating sound you can imagine. People buy the expensive model just to get away from that. OK, like most modern cars, although this thing is 10 years old, but it looks brand new. We really do our best to try and keep the vehicles up here. Uh, basically the same engine as the Corvette. It's uh, 556 horsepower, supercharged V8. I've had this thing 10 years. It's been no problems at all, no trouble at all. Uh, no warranty problems, no nothing. It just runs nice. It's fast. It's, uh, you know, got a nice ride. I don't know what to tell you. It's got plenty of room. You know, if you I'm so glad they never built a four-seater Corvette and called it a Corvette or a four-door Corvette. I'm glad they kept Corvette to what it is, a pure American sports car, and went to this sports sedan concept with, uh, with the Cadillac. But not a lot to see under here. You got this big piece of plastic over it like most modern cars do, but that's okay. I can't say I've ever had to do anything to it other than just change the oil and, and keep driving it. Actually, I think the manual's back in the CT5, the, uh, the black wing. That's, I guess that's the last internal combustion engine Cadillac will make. And it, it's quite a car. Fast, handles, kind of like this thing. Let's open the trunk up and see what that looks like. Open the trunk. As you can see, pretty good sized trunk. You, I mean, this is a practical car. You, if you had small kids, this could be your family car. You could get a stroller and some other stuff in there, and a set of golf clubs, whatever you need. I think it's a clean design. It's a good-looking car. I like the rear end. I like the exhaust, the way they exit out the center there. I like the slight flare out here. As you can see, there's a little too much space for me 
between the wheel and the arch. I would just like a bigger tire, a little meatier tire. And this can more than handle the power. I mean, you can shred these tires in 10 seconds pretty quickly, <laughs> especially now that they're kind of old. Brakes are phenomenal. Brakes are just incredible. Uh, really, really stops well. That was one of the outstanding features of this car when it came out. They really got it right from the get-go. You know, you think, oh, Cadillac, okay. No, no, not, not at all. Uh, you know, the one great thing about General Motors now, since they've sort of uh, restructured themselves after all that nonsense in the early 2000s, it's all engineers. Everybody that works there is an engineer. And every part of the car is engineered, and that really makes it kind of fun and nice. Let's show you the interior. You got these Recaro sport bucket seats, which are... These are the best Recaros I've ever sat in because they're not that buttock clenching numb when you're sitting in there. You know, they're just, it's the perfect blend. Perfectly comfortable, but holds you in the car when you're throwing around, when you're sliding around, holds you secure. And it's held up well. As I said, this car is, God, a decade old. It's 10 years old. It still looks pretty brand new. Let's take a look at the inside of the vehicle. Here we go. Plenty of leg room. I like the size and shape of the steering wheel. Got all your gauges and everything in front of you here. 2012 is a long time ago. It's got some kind of blue. You got to, it's a little complicated. It was one of those deals where the phone had to be, I think, hooked into the car. Let's start it up. All right, let's take it out for a ride, see how she does. Put it in competition mode. You know, as I said before, I'm not a big fan normally of the Recaro uh, competition seats, sports, whatever they call them. A lot of times when we put them in cars, they just you're in a comfortable car in an uncomfortable seat. These are perfect. Cadillac seems to have somehow worked with them and gotten it right, because these come more than comfortable enough and yet firm enough so you can throw the car around without feeling like you're gonna go sliding off the road. You know, I really like this car. I like the size of it. I like the power. And back in 2012, 556 horsepower, well, that was a lot. Well, I mean, it still is, but I just love the fact that it's a manual box. Yeah, I know the automatic is quicker. I know it's faster, blah, blah. but I just like being involved in the automobile. You know, I feel like I can control at least some part of my life. You know what I mean? A lot of times, a lot of, a lot of your life you can't control, whereas this is not a problem. I should have put some new tires on this thing before we did this, but. They still tread on there, you know. I know, I know they're old. I know it. I know it. I'm just gonna burn them off and get some new tires. But the car has been so trouble-free. Just oil change. That's all I do. I often wonder if there is ever talk to brand this as a four-door, as a as a Corvette rather, because you know Corvette as a brand is pretty strong. I mean, Ford did it with Thunderbird. When the Thunderbird came out in 55, it was a two-seater. It outsold the, the Corvette four to one, five to one. And then Ford figured, you know, we're selling it as a two-seater personal luxury car. We made it four seats. We could get even a bigger audience. And although the purists would deride that, it would actually turned out to be true because sales of T-Birds continued to go up and up once it became a four-seater and then a personal luxury car. I mean, I'm glad they didn't do it with Corvette, and I'm glad they chose to go with Cadillac. Just, just kind of wonder what goes on in the corporate boardrooms, you know. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how Cadillac was able to reinvent itself. You know, it was always, as I said before, just sort of, quote, an old man's car. And the fact they're able to turn around, make a incredibly powerful, well-handling sports sedan is, is pretty amazing. Horsepower cures a lot of problems. It's just amazing how much more involving a manual transmission is to an automatic. I mean, sometimes in traffic, I guess it can be a pain. I don't find it to be a problem. It's, it's the only exercise I get, really, 
just moving that clutch in and out. So, oh, okay, at least you get that, you know. And that new Blackwing is the final incarnation of this car. But I, I just like the purity of this one. I just think it's a, a great idea. It's a lot of fun. And I really enjoy driving it. Anytime the Americans can make a superior automobile less expensive as some of the Europeans, I think that's impressive, you know. I would put the new Corvette up against any of the European cars in terms of performance and handling. Okay, maybe there's some, uh, you don't like the fabric in the interior or something like that, but you gotta save money somewhere. Just the fact that it's, in many cases, half the price of a European equivalent. I mean, a European sports in with this kind of power is gonna cost you probably a third or at least a quarter more. Yeah, it just, just goes nice and then just put your foot in it. Whoa, whoa, tire breaking loose, there you go. Okay, that's why you wanna have new tires. And this has all the, you know, stability control on off, traction control on off. Uh, you got a competitive mode. I just keep it in that all the time. The other car I have that I would compare to this is probably my 2002 E55 AMG Mercedes. Uh, that thing is fabulous. I love that car too. But that's probably 20 grand more than this. So. It handles really nicely. Uh, I'm not saying that because I, I paid for this one. I bought it outright. I just love the idea of it so much. And that has not waned. It, you know, 10 years later, I still enjoy it just as much. But that shows you why you want to have uh, new tires. I'm sort of breaking my own rules here, but uh, yeah, I've just got to go out one day, do a couple of burnouts and just shred these and I put the cup twos on it. The cool thing about buying a car like this is, oh, you look like a responsible adult, but actually you've got a car that can uh, pretty much kick butt anywhere it goes. I think zero to 60 was around four seconds, maybe a little bit under that. Uh, which for 2012 is impressive. But the most impressive thing about this car is they got the entire package correct. It handles, it stops, it goes fast. Sometimes two out of three ain't bad, but in this case, you got three out of three. Hear that supercharger whine. I don't know if you can pick it up. Probably should have put a mic under the hood, but it sounds pretty cool. I mean, superchargers are so much better than turbochargers. Well, people debate it, but at least you got all the power all the time. There's no spooling up, it's right there. In the cars, it probably takes, in a modern car like this, maybe 15 horsepower to run the supercharger. That's what I'm guessing. If it's less than that, I think it's impressive. And a Duesenberg, it's like the old Duesenberg supercharger, it's like 50 horse, some crazy number. And it's just a big mechanical thing. That kick in the pants when you floor it, even in third gear, never gets old. Oh, yeah. Didn't get a chance to try that Blackwing uh, with the manual gearbox. Uh, that's probably the last great gas powered Cadillac that'll be. Everybody will be electric pretty soon. Boy, that happened fast, didn't it? Jeez. Steering is great. You know, I've got that uh, Pontiac Fiber 2002, the last year. And the steering is OK on that. It just feels a little weird, you know? And, you know, most GM people share components. Boy, this is great. This is, this is probably one of the best GM boxes I've, I've tried. I, I, I can't really fault this car in any way. I mean, I'm not a race car driver. I'm not good enough to make it do what it's capable of, but that's what keeps you interested in it, you know? It's always testing you, and you're always thinking how much further you can push it. And I'm not gonna push it too far with these tires. You know, one place Cadillac and General Motors has excelled is heating and air conditioning. The Europeans never quite get it right. Whereas with American stuff, you, I mean, I just touch the air conditioner, I'm freezing in two seconds in here. 
Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. When you're when you're inside this thing, it feels like a really small sports sedan. In some ways, I suppose it is, but it's not that small. But I've got plenty of leg room. It's comfortable. I love the shape of the wheel. The wheel is exactly the right size. Good position for your hands, no matter where you want to put them. You know, if you get a chance to buy one of these, especially a 10-year-old on a manual transmission, buy it. Because, boy, it's a great car. I can highly recommend it. Anyway, I'm sorry it took me so long to get around to road testing this one. This is a long-term test. I wanted to have it 10 years to see how well it held up, and uh, it's held up pretty good. So, very good, actually. So, you know, if you see one of these on the used car market, grab it, because everybody goes nuts for the second-hand BMWs, M5s, and all that. And they're great cars. But don't overlook this one, because this one's got a bit more horsepower, and I think it's surprising. I think it'd be surprising how the braking and the handling and the power uh, works. It's, it's very impressive. But anyway, thanks, you guys, and we'll see you again uh, next week with something totally different. Mm-hmm. <laughs>